Hello everyone, welcome back to your research buddy. In today's video, we are diving into a exciting topic in electrochemical research that is how to analyze and visualize the capacitive and diffusive contribution in cyclic voltammeter. If you are working on advanced battery materials or energy storage devices, this is a must know technique. So let's get started. So uh, in a cyclic voltammetry, the current response is a combination of two key contributions, capacitive and diffusion. And uh, in order to understand their contribution, which can provide valuable insights into the material's performance. Also, in case of their percentage, that uh, how to find out percentage of capacitive and diffusive contribution, we have already covered in our uh, previous part of electrochemistry analysis. All right. So in this part, uh, we will talk about the plot of capacitive and diffusive profiles in cyclic voltammetry. Okay. So in order to separate and quantify the capacitive and diffusive contribution from overall cyclic voltammogram, we can use the value of capacitive or diffusive contribution percentage value calculated from previous uh, section that we have covered using the method that we call power law and that is also a modified power law we have used in that case all right and the power law having dependence of the current on the scan rate so here we are having a step by step guide how to plot a, a capacitive and diffusive profiles in a cyclic voltammogram so first of all, what we need is to plot a cyclic voltammetric graph. Alright. Second step that we need to take is to find out the anodic and cathodic peak current at a particular potential at a constant step. Okay. So what we need to do is to take a specific or a need to find out a anodic and cathodic peak current at a particular potential. And that potential should be changed with a constant step like uh, uh, for example uh, if your potential window is uh, ranging from 1 volt to 5 volt then observe the value of anodic and cathodic peak currents at a potential step of 0 0.5 volt which is starting from let's say we are starting it uh, from 1 volt then observe the current both for anodic and cathodic at 1.5 volt 2 volt, 2.5 volt and up to so on till you are getting 5 volt as we are having a potential window 1 to 5 volt. Alright, here we are having a note that is smaller the step size of this potential the higher accuracy we got. Okay, so there is chances to get high accuracy if we have a smaller potential step. So in this case, in our own video, I am taking 0 0.5 volt because uh, if I am going to note it down, it will take lots of time. For your own analysis, you can uh, take a lower step size, like you can take 0 0.1 volt. So after 0 0.1 volt, absorb current anodic as well as cathodic. Then change the potential to a step size of 0 0.1 again and again observe the anodic and cathodic currents. Okay, and in third case, what we need to do is to multiply the anodic and cathodic current with capacitive contributions. So this contribution we have already calculated and uh, we have also talked about in our previous uh, video about the calculation of percentage can contribution. If you have not watched it till now, you can watch it and then you can calculate the capacitive and diffusive profiles separately from overall cyclic voltammogram. Fourth step is to multiply the anodic and cathodic current with diffusion contribution. Okay. And uh, last but not the least is the to plot output from step 3 and step 4 against potential. Okay. So these five steps we need to take. Okay. How? Let's talk about this one as well. 
so here uh, we have our own data that is cyclic voltmetric data which is observed at 10 millivolt per second scan rate so how to observe anodic and cathodic current so what we need to do is draw a line all right and uh, here this line should be let's say uh, at a proper step size so we are starting from 0 0.5 then uh, uh, with the gap of 0 0.5 again at uh, this point you need to observe anodic as well as cathodic current okay so uh, this can be done by using uh, data reader so you have you have two options uh, which is which can be done this is easy process once you have noted it down just move this line to another part and then again observe anodic and cathodic current Likewise, you need to do it for your complete data. Alright, you need to observe anodic and cathodic current for all the data till this end of your cyclic voltammogram or your potential window. So, I have already noted it down. I am showing it. Okay, so here um, uh, we have noted it down for 10 millivolt per second and here we got at uh, this step size that is uh, starting from here till uh, my end point I have observed my data so my potential window is ranging from minus 0 0.9 to plus 0 0.9 so the anodic current which is also named as oxidation and cathodic current which is also named as uh, reduction reduction current and oxidation currents so these two currents I have already shown how we can observe and we have observed it okay now what we need to do is to write the capacity percentage and the diffusive percentage that we have calculated from the previous part you can uh, watch the video if you have not uh, go through it you can watch that video okay so in last video we have found that the capacity percentage is 72 uh, percent so we can write it as 0 0.7252 diffusive percentage is uh, 0. Point uh, or 27 uh, percent which can be written as uh, 0 0.2748 now what we need to do for a uh, uh, capacitive case okay for the capacitive profile what we need to do is to multiply capacitive percentage with anodic current so you can observe here q3 column is for your capacity percentage and o3 column is for anodic current okay so we have multiplication of these two values that is uh, we have uh, um, multiplication of capacity percentage with anodic current okay so we got this column or we got this uh, column completely filled for reduction after we are uh, representing this with r after r after so what is r after here that is reduction after after the capacitive uh, contribution so this much value we are getting similarly for oxidation what we need to do is to multiply multiply the uh, cathodic current with capacitive contribution or capacity percentage so you can observe here this is a multiplication of q3 and p3 so this column we are getting for capacity profile similarly for diffusive profile what we need to do obviously what we need to do is to multiply anodic current with diffusion and then cathodic current with diffusion percentage then we got r after and uh, oxidation after for diffusive profile multiplication of r3 p3 all right okay also you can observe from here this is a multiplication of r3 so r is for uh, diffusive profile and uh, p3 is the cathodic current and this is oxidation after so what we need to do is to plot the graph that is the profile for capacitive and diffusive contributions so here we are having capacitive and diffusive contribution i am going to copy it okay just you need to uh, paste this one in your origin so i am going to show it so here we have uh, our data that is r after and oxidation after this is for capacitive profile capacitive profile 
and uh, last two columns are for diffusive profile right so these two columns we are getting and what we need to do is to plot this against your uh, potential window and uh, we have already observed this one here so you can observe you just need to copy it and paste it in the place of your uh, x-axis okay so this complete profile we need to plot by using a plot uh, diagram here so we have i have already uh, plotted it so i'm going to show so here after plotting the diffusive and capacity profile we are getting a graph like this one okay and this graph is at uh, 10 millivolt per second okay so by mistakenly i have written it 100 so it is for 10 millivolt per second and uh, the capacitive contribution is 72.52% uh, uh, and diffusive percentage is corresponding to that which, uh, which is approximately 27% all right so this is how you can plot separate profiles for capacitive and diffusive uh, from complete cyclic voltammogram okay if you have any question you can comment below thanks for watching this video i'll see you in the next one thank you so much